place you do not know that he loves on the journey I will send you and you shall be a blessing you shall be a blessing you shall be a blessing Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Rabbi Stephen, Rob Shmuel here with you. And you probably know why I sang that, because this week's Torah portion is, that's right, Lech Lecha. And in that portion, God appears to, Mo, uh, appears to Avraham. Avram, he's Avraham at this point, and he says, I want you to leave your home, your family, your people, and I'm going to send you on a journey and just like the song says, you'll be a great nation. I will make you a great nation. I will bless those that bless you, and I will curse those that curse you. So, and that's a beautiful song that was written by Debbie Friedman and a few other people. She, uh, as you may remember, she was a uh, a very uh, important Jewish person, a songstress that wrote some songs, and we use a lot of those. And uh, we we miss her. She died way before her time. So, before we get into that. As usual, I like to um, give some adulations to some people. I want to thank all the kids that joined us this Sunday for our first, my first Hebrew school with uh, Temple Shalom. Um, and uh, let's look forward to this as the beginning. Uh, we had some kids and uh, at the beginning, these were the 10 to 13 year olds, the pre B'nai Mitzvot. And uh, we did some Hebrew teaching. We talked a little bit about Torah. We split up and we came back with some other little kids, sang some songs like we just did. Talked a little bit about Rosh Hashanah and the High Holidays and uh, the Shema. And I'm looking forward to many more of those. So thank you everybody who participated. And if you missed this week, join us next week. The, the links will go out. All right. So, Lech Lecha. This is really kind of the beginning of Judaism as we know it. It sets the stage for God to give his Torah to us, the Jews, the Hebrews, and spread the message. And as we talked about with the kids, you know, Abraham, we talk about the Abrahamic religions. So of course, you know, Abraham was the uh, patriarch, the first patriarch of us, of the Jewish people. And he was also influenced to other major religions in the world, which are Christianity and, and Islam. And between Islam and Christianity, that's two billion people. So let's circle back and talk a little bit about, um, about this journey that Hashem sent uh, Avram, Avram on. So we refer to him as Avram at the beginning of this portion. And later on, he becomes Abraham. So Avram is uh, his name from two words, Av and Haram. Av is father, as we kids, as we and the children learn today in, uh, in our first uh, approach, our first experience with Hebrew. And Haram, he was the father from Haran. And later on, he becomes Avraham. Now, he becomes Avraham after God tells him to circumcise his penis. And that's a covenant. And at that point, Avram becomes Avraham, Avraham, the father of a multitude of nations. And God tells Avraham that his, he will be the patriarch or the progenitor of people that will become like sands on the beach, like the stars in the sky. Not so much these days, is there? I believe that the Jewish population of the world is 15 million. Between Christians and Muslims, which are, again, the Abrahamic religions, uh, there's 2 billion people. With the Jews, 15, 15 million. That's it. Did I say 15, 15 million? Not much. Not many. How then did, 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 are we going to realize this promise that God made to Abraham? Does it mean that when his people will become like the stars in the sky, does that mean the other two religions that follow Abraham? Or does it mean that better times await us in the future? Who knows? But it's certainly something to think about. 
before God has Abraham circumcise himself and all the male members of his family, which includes his manservants, his son Ishmael, who was 13 at the time, which by the way is why uh, Muslims circumcise at the age of 15, and Isaac, who was just born. And it isn't until after Isaac is born that we get this commandment to circumcise. So Isaac is eight days old. Interestingly enough, why eight days? Well, some people say because you want to make sure that there's a Shabbat in there. And by the way, this is the only commandment that we can do on Shabbat. Otherwise, you're just observing Shabbat. But think about it. When a person, when a baby is circumcised in eight days, you know, it's a whole process, right? Now, in cutting off the foreskin way back then, they'd find a sharp rock and they do it. And, you know, you're, you're in big pain for about three days and afterwards it starts to heal and you're good to go. Today, of course, with modern medicine, you know, it's a little bit more um, civilized, if you will, a little bit cleaner, et cetera, et cetera. But we still do it. And this was our covenant. And the commandment in the Torah, and it's seen as a commandment, God says, no longer will you be known as Avram. You will now be known as Avraham. Now, in the art scroll, Chumash, and some of the other Chumashim, Abraham is always referred to as Abraham, even when we're talking about the time that he was just Avram, which, by the way, was for the first 75 or so, uh, actually 86 years of his life. He was known as Avram. But, it's, but in Judaism, we say Abraham anyway when we're referring to him. Okay, so again, why eight days? Because seven is a holy number, and eight means that as human beings, we're rising above the actual creation. We're going beyond the creation. Because remember, God created everything within a span of eight days. Now, like we discussed, was it really a day, a 24-hour day? Probably not. It was just probably a period of time, different periods for different days. But the point is, is that now we're into the realm of the human. Eight days. See? So, that's when we have, we have our sons do circumcision. By the way, uh, I had a meeting with a student from uh, one of the colleges who was taking a comparative religions course, and she asked me, and I believe, I think she was uh, Muslim, she said, are women circumcised too? And I said, absolutely not. Men are circumcised on their penis for a very obvious reason. That's where life comes from, right? With women, it's not involved. That part of their body, that part of their anatomy, it is not really involved in, in, in childbearing or giving birth, right? So why do anything to it? You know, that's the reason. The other reason is that, well, I'll leave it to your imagination. We understand that. All right. So let's go back and let's talk a little bit about Abraham's life. God approached Abraham because Abraham had this concept that there was one God, but God wanted to make sure. So he gives him 10 tests. Now, some of the te one of the tests was leave your land. Just go, just pick up and leave. And just have faith that I'm gonna tell you where to go. Another trial was the idea of circumcision. All right. Another trial was he sends him down to Egypt. All right. So he goes to Egypt with Sarah, his wife, and her name is Sarah. Her name used to be Sarai, which means my princess. But when Avraham became the father of a multitude of nations, Sarai, his princess became just Sarah, a princess, and she was our first matriarch. So Abraham and Sarah go down to Egypt, where Sarah was a beautiful woman, even though they were of advanced age. And some of the Egyptians, especially Pharaoh, took a liking to her and uh, didn't. And, and Abraham was concerned because if he thought that they thought that, that they were husband and wife, they would kill him to get to Sarah. So he says he's a sister, and in a way he wasn't lying because she was actually a, a relative, and that's what they did back then. So once the king, once the pharaoh finds out that they're married, and this is because God sends a plague, you know, he gives Abraham and Lot gifts and sends them on his way. So Abraham had amassed a, a fortune in cattle, and he had some manservants, and now he goes with Lot, and they go settle in... Uh, uh, the land which is now really Israel. 
and Lot goes to settle in the place where Sodom and Gomorrah is because the herdsmen were fighting over land. And Abraham said, look, I'll give you first dibs. You know, wherever you want to settle, you can settle. And Lot decides to settle in Sodom and Gomorrah uh, because he thought the land was good, gets involved in, in a big rebellion between these kings. He's captured. Abraham goes and rescues him. And they go back to their separate ways. So that's where we are now. Meanwhile, Sarah very quickly was barren. So she has Abraham have a child with Hagar, who was his concubine, and that's where Ishmael came from. Ultimately, God tells Abraham, you're going to have a son with Sarah, and he's going to carry on the legacy of this covenant, and that's Isaac. And that's what we're going to talk about next time. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Again, thank you for Hebrew School. Any questions, any feedback? I'm anxious to hear it. We want to make this better, so let me know. All right. Again, talk to you soon, and we'll see you, we'll see you next week for services, and we'll see you Thursday night for a class on prayers.